Hey everyone, welcome back to the Heretic Circle channel. It is I, Jack, and let's talk Alien Romulus. Well, if you have seen any of the Alien films, um, you know that there are a lot of hits, particularly the first two, and there's a lot of misses. Um, <clears throat> depending on what, you know, depending on your taste, you'll either hate Prometheus and Covenant, or you might just hate uh, Alien 3 and Resurrection. Me, personally, I don't like Res uh, Resurrection. I do appreciate Prometheus and what it's trying to do, what it's trying to explain, <clears throat> and I also like Covenant. Um, even though it's more, those two films were a little bit more on the um, the, like highbrow, they were trying to expand not the not only the mythology but the mythology of explain like the the what do you call it the space jockey and maybe even explain creation itself. So it was it, per, per, uh, Prometheus specifically was trying to touch on very high level thinking themes. So it deviated away from what Alien, the whole Alien franchise, really. And, Try to kind of do something different, but with, with the alien name. But regardless. Okay, so Alien Romulus. Well, this takes place in between Alien and Aliens. And I'm not going to spoil really anything here. So I do think you should watch it for yourself. Um, I will say, though, that is a very good film. It is very well done. It's not the scariest film the year of the year just like they did with long legs this is not the scariest fucking film of the year no it is if you have if you fear of if you have fears of claustrophobia you know being in the dark arachnophobia we know why arachnophobia um then yeah those little things will make you anxious and will make you just fear be stuck in your seat yeah, I get it. But overall, to me, it's not the scariest film of the year. And I do have arachnophobia. And I do hate the facehuggers. They fucking irk me every time. But regardless, I yeah, I did jump twice. But I did enjoy the ride. But I don't think it was the scariest film ever. Um, now, the film currently on, on Rotten Tomatoes has an 81%, and I think the credit... Uh, the audience score is like 85. It's not a perfect film. <clears throat> it's, I think, generally speaking, out of 10, it's an 8 out of 10. But me personally, and I love these films. I love the series. Um, I am one of the people that will defend Alien 3. Well, with an asterisk. The theatrical does not work. The work print edition, though, that's found on the Blu-ray or the 4K. Well, actually, there's no 4K yet, but the Blu-ray, that does work. And what it, to me personally, that's where Ripley's story truly ends. Uh, Resurrection was an interesting take, but it, it was too flawed. Um, it was really too flawed. Although what they're trying to achieve and that's what they're trying to really end is Ripley's story and I, I truly don't think it works so me from for me personally her story ends at the end of Alien 3 so this though this movie the reason why I personally give it like a 7.5 is primarily because there's certain things that happen in this film that are done for fan service and i don't think that worked um i will say Ferry alvarez did an amazing job directing this i believe he also wrote it so it was an amazing amazing story um the actors uh like uh Kaylee's, uh spaney um she's in civil war um and david Johnson, um, those are the two standout in this film. Amazing work. Um, they did great. But there are things in this film that 
are done as fan service and i think that does a disservice to the film itself because and you'll hear other online reviewers say the same kind of thing that the people in this film don't know they're in a horror film and they don't know specifically they're in an alien film yet there's certain things that are done that are alien related and to me that's like why <laughs> why are you doing that so, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's really going to be for either a, a crowd-pleasing moment. For me, it made me cringe. Um, I will say that <laughs> there is a twist towards the third act um, that some people are digging, some people are not liking. Me, personally, I dug it, but I kind of saw it coming. And it goes back to the whole fan service kind of thing. But you know what? In the end, the story does work. I will I will say this, and this is not a spoiler at all, but I do love the fact that it does if Eddie Alvarez did take this series back to its roots in Alien. No one gonna hear you scream in space. There's moments where it's dead silent. That is truly remarkable. Um, I will say that, though, this is kind of like a weird homage. And I say weird, again, going with the fan service thing, a weird homage to Alien and Aliens. Now, does it work? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but it it's there just to push the story forward. And I think knowing how a lot of you know these executives are when it comes to these type of films they don't want to take a risk they want to make sure that people are happy they're serviced <laughs> that they see something that they're familiar with and it ultimately causes them to have a, a positive reaction they don't want to risk having um a viewer have a negative reaction but that's kind of where the art is you know you kind of have to take risks but they don't want to so whatever but the film is very well done very well paced it's it just starts to, to it, it's it's a little slow in the beginning i will say but once once you get to the part and you see it in the trailer with the the <laughs> The part where like something's in the wall. Uh, that part, <laughs> that's when everything starts to go downhill. So, I think overall it was very well done. And this movie was done on a budget of about eighty million, from what I'm understanding. And there was a lot of practical effects done. Fede Alvarez wanted people to actually be the alien, not use CGI. It worked. It really, really worked. You can see the attention to detail in the alien, and it made it more... That made the alien scarier, because you can tell the difference. We're at a point where, thanks to 8K projections and 4K projections and digital screens and IMAX screens, we can tell when a CGI uh, effect is used. We can tell now. This, you can tell, this was real. This was textured. This was something. You can touch it. The actor, if the moment called for it, the actor could touch its head and, and rub their fingers on it. The, you know, the, that's how good it is. And that's why practical, practical effects really, really work better than CGI. And But there's merits for CGI, of course. And there is CGI used in this film. Whew, okay, <laughs> the CGI in this film, though, there's a lot of hits. It works a lot of times. There's other times where it doesn't. I will say the CGI in this film does not work a lot. And I think primarily that's because the budget was at 80 million. They didn't give them another 40 million to fix those CGI areas or shots. So, you know take it take it for what it is and it, it, there's a few parts especially in the third act where the cgi just goes really really bad and i think that's where a lot of people are talking about in that who decided that part who decided that in the third act 
because it could have been done well. Again, practical, but it wasn't, so it kind of didn't really work. But it did. It did and it didn't. Visually, to me, it needed a lot of work. But in terms of the story, it worked. It was it was like, ah, okay. But this is kind of for me, for me personally, where you go like, ah, ah. Uh, Okay, because if you're a fan of the Alien series, you'll pick up on things very quickly. If you've never seen Alien or Prometheus or Aliens or Alien Resurrection or Alien 3 or Covenant, if you haven't seen any of them, really, or you briefly have seen bits and parts, everything will be new to you. But for a lifelong alien fan i could kind of see some things coming ahead a mile ahead and i'm like uh please just execute it right please execute it right and they did they did i I had a good time i had a good time i do truly think it's a it's a good alien film i would go see it again it's not perfect um everyone's look everyone's ranking for alien films is different i think consensus wise everyone can agree alien number one aliens number two some have them backwards and hey it's understandable if you like more action fine aliens is your jam that'll be number one but i like the horror aspect of it and alien has that so alien for me number one aliens number two uh I'll be honest, I'll be honest. I will say Alien 3, the work print edition is still number 3 to me in my list and I would put uh Romulus as 4, I would put Prometheus as 5, Covenant as 6 and Resurrection as the last 7. Yeah, you that's just me. Everyone has their own their own list. So hey, that's fine. So in terms of a general score like general audience score i think eight out of ten does make sense and that's pretty fair for me personally because i'm such an such an alien fan it's 7.5 and it's not by a lot it's it's almost an eight it's just those little fan service moments were cringy to me and well i would prefer not to have them but hey whatever i still had a good time I still recommend you go see it and if you have seen it or excited to see it leave a comment below um let me know your list and also let's just get into it if you can get into it in the comment section why the hate for alien 3 the work printed if if you haven't seen the work print edition watch the work print edition and then tell me if it's as a, as as shitty as the movies as people claim it to be, the theatrical I understand, but the work print edition is leaps and bounds above the theatrical. So leave a comment below. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a re- a full review of that one or dissertation or something. And quickly, just want to give a quick shout out to Morbid Empire Merchandise. Um, my buddy does these uh, cool little um, shirts. I'll leave a link in the in the description. Go support him. Awesome shirts. And he's always at Midsummer. So if you've gone to Midsummer Scream, you'll see his booth there and always always has cool stuff. So give you know, give him a give him a look. And also hereticcircle.com for other cool shirts and prints and records too. But anyways though, like, subscribe, share all that with your friends, and see you next time. Cheers. Oh, one quick thing too. I went to see this at the Alamo Draft House and they had their own little special menu and all that and a special cup. And I know everything's everyone's a rave about their popcorn buckets. Me though personally, I love pins. They had this. These enamel pins. They're fucking dope. I, I just love these things. So Alamo Draft House, thank you so much. Alright, cheers.